after your day like today, you may need a little something to mellow yourself out. So let's talk about a happier subject. Yesterday, Canada made history by legalizing cannabis for recreational use. Now, as I told you repeatedly, most of these pot stocks are probably way too speculative to own here. But nevertheless, we're witnessing the birth of what could be an incredibly disruptive growth industry. So I've made it my mission to do everything I can to teach you about it. Which brings me to a new one. Green Growth Brands. This is a privately held, I mean it isn't trading yet, privately held American company that bills itself as a lifestyle-oriented consumer products company, one that just happens to sell cannabis-related products. That includes an assortment of cannabidiol-infused personal care products. This is the CBD oil stuff that keeps pe uh, being legalized in state after state. Now, Green Growth Brands is going public in Canada via reverse takeover later this year. And the company's got the backing of the family that built DSW, an American Eagle, meaning this is not some fly-by-night operation. So let's take a closer look with Peter Horvath, the CEO of Green Growth Brands, a guy who spent years as a senior executive at Victoria's Secret and American Eagle to learn more about this business before it comes public. Mr. Horvath, welcome to Mad Money. Hi, Jim. All right, Peter. If you can, explain to people your model and why uh, there really isn't a good retail entry and that that's your stock and trade. Well, thank you, Jim. Our model, uh, well, look, we've got uh, decades of uh, experience uh, competing for customers in saturated and mature markets. And uh, we've been fortunate enough to be part of the teams and leading the strategies that yielded the number one lingerie business in the world, the number one personal care products business in the world in Bath and Body Works, the number one denim business in North America in American Eagle, and the number one uh, shoe specialty business in North America, DSW. So we think not only are we maybe the first guys you've met in this industry who've operated multi-billion dollar businesses, have taken them public in the New York, in the, uh, the U.S. markets, and done all those earnings conference calls. Uh, but also, we've built brands from scratch and brought them to consumers, com uh, competed for consumers with everyone else, and uh, the result is we came out on top. So I'd say uh, the team we've put together is arguably one of the strongest retail teams in any market, let alone cannabis. Well, I, I, when I heard about you, I said to myself, this is the first CEO who's going into retail who's actually been in retail. So can you describe for those people who have not been to a typical dispensary pot store what yeah. they look like, which is pretty antediluvian, versus what you've got in mind? Yeah, so, so look, part of getting into a new industry is you have to study it. So we uh, went to the 100 best cannabis stores in the United States, which is quite a trip. And the idea is you do that very quickly and you see them fast shot at, uh, so that eventually you, you can see what the patterns are. So here's what we saw. Everybody's doing the best they can, first of all. So congratulations for starting an industry. The, the reality is there's points of dissonance every step of the way. And I will tell you that I've seen the best possible stores. There are things to admire, but generally every single store is underperforming its true market potential. So, so basically, what you, the experience, you walk up to the door in a typical store, there's a guy with a flak vest and a gun, very inviting. Uh, <laughs> if, if you're lucky, he smiles, okay? He checks your ID to make sure you can go inside. You go inside, and uh, I'll, I'll imagine one store in particular. There were iPads on the tables. We go in, and uh, it was well-staffed. You got in line. You, you, you might have looked around while you're waiting in line. Uh, you get, to the, you get to the back, you're trying to figure out what to buy, you're kind of overwhelmed by the assortment. It's not organized in a way that's intuitive. Uh, you're, one, you're worried, am I in line? Are they gonna make me buy something if I just wanna ask a question? Uh, in this case, I got to, the, got to the desk ready to buy something and they said, did you register? Uh, no, oh, you have to register at the desk in the front. So I think you get the point. It, there's so many, in most retail experiences, there's too many points of dissonance. In, in cannabis, it's the same, except they're even more extreme. Uh, out of stock is common. And, and look, what pisses off people more than going to the grocery store to buy milk and they don't have any? Uh, what are the chances you're going to go back to that store again? So we're seeing massive out of stocks in these stores. And I think it's a matter of they, they need to develop stronger supply chain relationships. Totally. Um, the, the, the assortments, I've seen places that have 140 strains of weed. Do you really need 140 <laughs> strains of weed? 13 or 14 price points, 13 or 14 price points. Do you, you know, why is this 39 and that's 41? So, so I think you get it. Okay. Look, we're all experts at being consumers. 
Right, but let me ask you just, I only have about a minute and, and left. You are doing THC and CBD. Uh, how will you describe yes. them when someone says, hey, man, I want to buzz, versus someone who says, I really want to get high? I mean, do you have people who know THC versus CBD? Well, here's the deal. We're going to use different channels for that. Uh, I think a cannabis store is going to be focused on THC. Uh, we'll probably sell some CBD beauty uh, care product in there because you can actually try it. Turns out, if you're using something that's topical, that's CBD, just like anything else you or your wife might use that, that's topical, you need to be able to smell it. You need to be able to feel it. And if it's THC, you're not going to be able to. What's more exciting, though, is we've got another channel that's going to be through grocery stores uh, and drug stores and retailers that we're developing right now. We're working uh, hard with four, three businesses that represent 4,000 doors. We're going to announce them later after we go public. Um, and we're bringing CBD, uh, personal care, and beauty product to those stores. Uh, we'll also develop adjacent categories in vapor, vapor pens, and uh, edibles, and tinctures. Oh, so cool. CBD is a big market. I think CBD is going to be bigger than what people are forecasting. Oh, I, I agree with you, Peter. You've really got it down. I cannot wait till you come public. That is Peter Horvath, CEO of Green Growth Brands. Finally, someone who knows retail. They have money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.